worth of $77.1 billion. And next, investor Warren Buffett, who moved up one slot this year with a net worth of $72.7 billion. Bob Agnew, SRN News. A 26-year-old nurse who contracted Ebola while caring for the first person in the U.S. diagnosed with the deadly disease has filed a lawsuit against the parent company of the Dallas hospital where she worked. Nina Pham says the hospital was unprepared to treat Ebola cases. More details at srnnews.com. From Washington, I'm Linda Kenyon. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for our sizzling party savings. Book your wedding event or reception, your birthday bash, or a special event of any kind and celebrate at Angelo's and Vinci's. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate in one of our many festive banquet rooms. It's an incredible fun event you'll never forget. Food, music, and lots of fun. Call for the details and don't forget our daily lunch and dinners plus our Sunday champagne brunch. Just fourteen ninety five. dollars Minestrone soup, sausage and peppers, pastas, chicken dishes, salads, scones and muffins, plus so much more. A chocolate fondue fountain, Zeppelis, cannolis, fresh fruit, champagne, and Junior will be waiting to make the omelet of your choice from our omelet bar. Angelo's and Vinci's has been voted on the Orange County Hot List as one of the top five Italian restaurants for the past six years. And don't forget our award-winning pizzas. Thin or thick, they're yummy. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Call 714-879-4022. 714 879 4022. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Vasily is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. Listen to Dr. Pat, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on CRN. Welcome to Divine Love Talk with Dr. Parthenia Grant, where we talk about health, well-being, and the love of the divine that exists in all of us. Now, here's your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. Okay, I'm so excited to be here today having um, a special guest, Frank Ferranti, star of the award-winning documentary, May I Be Frank. Also joining us is Kim Michaels, my co-host, who is the author of um, The Mystical Initiations of Love and The Spiritual Road to Self-Esteem. Welcome, Frank Ferranti. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you know, it was a lot of fun when you were on the show a few years ago talking about <clears throat> the documentary, now a book of the same name as the documentary, May I Be Frank, has been released, and you're on tour, uh, back to having fun, and I'd, I'd like to catch the audience up on what the documentary was about. So could you um, fill us in briefly on how that journey all started at Gratitude Cafe, an organic raw food restaurant that we're so privileged here in L.A. to have two of them? Mm. Well, okay. Let's see. <clears throat> ten years and nine in ten, ten years and nine words or less. Um, <laughs> well, it's um, the day the doc- you start with the day you walked into the restaurant and how you <clears throat> felt well, the, because the, I, I'd I'm like sorry, to focus on the journey uh, back to love. Well, the day I walked into the restaurant, uh, I was uh, pre-diabetic, uh, three hundred pounds, more or less, uh, very depressed, and felt stuck. And uh, I, I knew that uh, I needed to. I, I knew that something needed to shift in my life. And if people that have uh, people that have experienced addiction are very well aware that there are worse things than dying. And um, I felt really that the colors in my life were drying up. That it, it was everything was turning into a film noir. Anyway, so I'm. I'm, uh, most people, uh, most people in the new age world, they talk about signs. And, um, in my case, uh, I, I needed something a, l- a little more, you know, most people, they're referring to subtle experiences, you know, maybe a book, you know, showing up or something like that. I needed a billboard, <laughs> you know. And so I looked, I was, um, in San Francisco at the time, and down the street, I saw this big sign that said Cafe Gratitude. And, uh, I am in the twelve step world and I in the twelve step world gratitude is a central virtue. One of the things that we say is <clears throat> a grateful heart will not drink and that sort of thing and 
And so I thought it was somebody from, uh, you know, from uh, a 12-step program being clever and cute, you know, somebody from AA being cute and opened up a coffee shop and called it Cafe Gratitude. So I went over there expecting to see recovered uh, drug addicts and alcoholics having coffee and BSing about stuff, you know, and that's what I went there anticipating. When I went there and I opened the door, I was sort of, I was surprised at the atmosphere. A, a bell rang. I walked in and I looked around and it wasn't what I expected. And I felt the, the moment of a surreal moment. I didn't know what I was looking at exactly. And uh, the um, uh, one of the, the uh, one of the one of the boys in the film, Ryland, I looked up, looked and smiled. And so I walked up to him and I shook his hand and I said, "Hey, man." I had to have a cup of coffee in Cafe Gratitude. I figured somebody here is in recovery. And he <laughs> smiled back at me and said, we're all recovering from something, aren't we? I immediately knew he was not in the 12-step world and just assumed he smoked a joint before going to work, given how happy he was. <laughs> so I looked around, and he, I had a perplexed look on my face, and he, he said, uh, well, we are a, 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 a mostly raw food vegan Restaurant, and my first thought was raw food. How do you cook that? <laughs> and um, I, it was really an unusual place, and, I, and but it was the people there were really bright and shiny, you know, and very uh, very enthusiastic. And I ha and I was extremely lonely at the time, and so I started going back and frequenting the place. And it wasn't because of the food I, at all. I mean, I would I would order something. So I wouldn't take up space, and uh, and and then when I was done hanging out, I promptly went to the nearest Indian buffet or chicken and rib place, <laughs> because at the time it was my belief that uh, 300 pounds could not survive on leaves alone. <laughs> so uh, I started frequenting the place, as I said, and one day I was sitting at my table, and and Rylan came up to me and said, um, "Hey, Frankie, you know that movie Super Size Me?" I said, yeah, that's where that uh, young guy eats eats fast food for a month and gets really sick. He says, yeah, yeah, well, we want to do something similar. We want to take a guy who's not well, which was a rather generous definition for my condition at the time, <laughs> and, uh, and we want to uh, feed him uh, this food and then take him to holistic health practitioners and cleanses and colonics, and we want to film it, and we want you to be the guy. I looked at him and I said, sure, why not, whatever. <clears throat> I, I, you know, they didn't have a camera. They, you know, I just thought, you know, I, I didn't, I just thought, sure, why not. It was like, yeah, that's sweet. Well, I didn't well, think anything Frank, of it. Frank, looking back, that was a fortuitous moment that <laughs> <laughs> literally You're changed your life. You're a understatement. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Aren't you glad you said yes? Yeah, I certainly am. It was uh, I wasn't always glad I said yes, but in that particular time, yes. Well, let let's talk about that. And I the, Kim Michaels, the reason I wanted you to join us um in in this segment is because she couldn't handle me by herself. She needs help, man. <laughs> No, Kim. She wants to survive this interview. Uh, no, listen, uh, Frank. Kim, when he when I met him in Australia, I'm a you know raw vegetarian, and they were kind enough at his conference to offer you know vegetarian food, but it was cooked and bland, and I just thought it was horrible food. But it was so sweet of them to offer it um, there that I was grateful. And Kim has said on the show that he could never survive on the kind of diet you know that that. That I uh, consume because it would have him so ungrounded. So I'd like to you, I'd like for you to speak to that a little bit, you know, just for Kim's edification. Well, I think, <clears throat> and first of all, I think that's a great question um, because it precludes any notion of a, a dogmatic approach. Right. There is no one size fits all. So um, there are people that thrive on a Vedic. Mm -hmm. um, diet. There are people that thrive on a variety of diets. I think, though, that uh, <clears throat> raw food, I mean, if you t eat raw, um, it's, it's a radical departure from what most people are used to. Absolutely. But, but, but I find that um, 
part of it is in, in the the prepar- of course in the preparation, which is true of all foods. But I have met raw food chefs that that uh, they make food that is so unbelievably delicious and satisfying that uh, you know I, I, I could see myself you know I could see myself pursuing that. Um, that being said, there are times when my body calls for something that, you know, something other than that, uh, other than raw food or other than, or actually sometimes it even calls for once in a while I, I need a piece of fish or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you have to go to confession <laughs> to do that. I think that, that what I discovered is once I started cleaning up, um, and by the way, it's not just food, it's right, really it's cleaning up. Um, every aspect of your life as best you can a day at a time. Yeah. That then you, your intuition becomes actually, becomes clearer. At least my experience is that it's become clearer and I can listen to my body. When I was drinking and using drugs, I could not rely on that because I was toxic. Yeah. And what my body was telling me to, to, uh, was, was attracted to was destructive. Yeah. Well, 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 Frank, um, I'd like to just kind of point out that, you know, when I went raw, I never did drugs or smoked or I I was I never drank other than like a occasional glass of wine where I would just kind of hold it, you know, at a gathering. Um, But what I found was that even with that lifestyle, I was still full of parasites and candida and all kinds of problems from eating the standard American diet and that the raw food and the detox that I went through um, eating just organic and raw and taking herbal cleanses and colonics and enemas that I experienced the same thing that you went through of this clarity of mind and this energy surge and this ability, you know, to focus um, that I had never had before. Mm-hmm. And I've heard, you know, many, many other people say the same thing. So <clears throat> I'm a real proponent when you're not feeling well or you're not looking your best of doing, you know, at a 30-day cleanse or a 30-day detox if you can handle that. And then going back to whatever your comfort zone is, I don't think you have to be 100% raw. I, I agree. I, I, I think, though, you know, when you think about it, it's, it's um, like a sabbatical in a yes. way. You know, and like one of the things, I just came back from a retreat in uh, Tulum, of all places. Which... I just came back from there. <laughs> And, you I know, went to and, and, well, great because, like, I, you know, we can, we, you know, if you want, we can touch on that. But, okay. But, um, <clears throat> pardon me. But what I find about a retreat is that is that, and that's so wonderful, is that you get another perspective on your reality. Yes. And um, and um, I started to, I, I was down there, and in a couple of days, I realized how crazy I was so stressed out, and I didn't even realize it. And living in L.A. has its share of stresses, and you either. And I found myself coping a lot. Like there was a point where I was in my car two hours a day, and that's not normal. That's not. And then all of a sudden, I'm in a place where I'm barefoot most of the time. I'm not driving, and I'm having really high vibrational conversation. I'm in this. I'm deliberately cultivating a field of a higher vibration because I'm another with around other around other people that are doing the same, and. And so some might say when you call people back at home, they'll say, well, that's not, you know, that's not real. And my feeling is, like, who, who wrote the book on that? <laughs> you know, who says, you know, who determines what's real and what's not? <laughs> Reality is one of the most elusive things in the world. Well, I, I would like to have uh, Kim um, jump in on that uh, about reality and elusiveness because, Kim, I think you spend a lot of time in, the, in high vibrational spiritual states. Well, who says uh, feeling lousy is real and feeling good is bad? You know, I mean, that that's, has become almost a norm in our society. Get back to the real world, they say, and that means you're supposed to feel lousy. And I don't agree with that. I think reality is, to a large extent, what we make it. And if we want it to be positive, we certainly can make it a positive spiral. 
Yeah, we it, we we all have a choice. Um, listen, Frank, did you visit my friend Miguel Bautista's raw food restaurant in Cancun? He's got some amazing <clears throat> um, products there and food. I didn't get a chance. to Basically, from Cancun, we took off. But you know, and, I, and I'd like to, if I may, uh, um, um, answer. I just would make a comment on on um, what was just said, and that is, you know, I I agree. And I also think that there are aspects, uh, you know, and that's what the practice is because, it's, you know, America, you know, there's this thing in America, you're supposed to be feeling good all the time or something's wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that there are, there are aspects of, of the human experience. And this is, of course, just my opinion. Like, I, you know, I, I'm, one of the things I, I learned, you know, one of the things I learned at this point in my life is how much I don't know. Yes. And I'm okay with that. Absolutely. You know, but today, what I, <laughs> what my opinion is today is that there are aspects of, of the human experience, like grief. You know, somebody... Uh, okay, Frank, uh, yeah. let's pick up on that after commercial break, and we'll talk a little bit more about your return to love. You're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I'm interviewing Frank Ferrante with May I Be Frank. And my uh, co-host, Kim Michaels, is joining in. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original Double Deck Hamburger Combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous Big Boy Special Sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collections and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-211-8753. That's 800-211-8753. 800-211-8753. Have you ever considered adding a home security system but thought it would be too expensive? Here's the good news. There's never been a more affordable time to help protect your home, valuables, and your loved ones. You can now get a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, with the installation of a new ADT-monitored system. Here's even better news. Your new system, worth $850, is free. You pay just a $99 installation charge and purchase monthly monitoring for less than $2 a day. Call Protect Your Home today at one 8 Six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. That's one eight six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. Get the peace of mind that comes with owning an ADT monitored system plus a one hundred dollar Visa card from Protect Your Home. Call now one eight six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. That's one eight six 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 nine eighty nine fifty four. Thirty six month monitoring contract required. General terms and conditions apply. Visit protectyourhome.com forward slash terms. Okay, we're back with more Divine Love Talk. I'm interviewing my guest, Frank Ferranti, author of May I Be Frank and star of the documentary, May I Be Frank. Um, Frank, um, 
I would like to have you um, focus in this segment on um, the experience and and the changes that you went through as you were eating this organic raw food that actually detoxifies the body and juicing and going through the cleansing process and how that helped you um, find this you that you had lost? Well, what I... uh what I experienced was, first of all, it was a radical departure from the norm. Because, keep in mind, I was pre-diabetic. I was under a form of chemotherapy for my hepatitis C, which was similar to what they give women with breast cancer. At the time, it was like interferon and ribavirin and a host of other things. <clears throat> so I was pretty in pretty bad shape. And, uh, and and emotionally as well. It wasn't, it wasn't physical, and that's, you know, that's right. what I, I often really left to focus on is the emotional and spiritual result as well as the dramatic physical recovery yes um so when i started doing this it was again as i said a radical departure from my from what i was normally um the way i was normally eating and that was definitely challenging and that's where where uh the support comes in where people that that uh that were encouraging me and motivating me and and loving me through this process because I know for sure I could never have done it alone. That is without a doubt. And uh, what started happening is that my the mechanisms that I employed to shield my you know the, to to shield myself to protect myself from whatever whatever illusion um, fearful illusion I had whatever that way it may be all of a sudden those things started to to, to fall away, and next thing I know, uh, I'm, I'm starting to experience emotions, raw emotions as well, and and uh, things were coming to the surface that I was definitely um, um, I was definitely serious about hiding from you and and um, <laughs> and and all of that, and so we start, you know, and, and just you know, I just projecting. This this illusion uh, of who I thought I should be in the, in the world anyway. So I start eating this, you know, I start eating this way, and I start having my conversation start changing because I'm hanging around different people, and it was sort of baptism by fire in a way, and and all of a sudden I started feeling really lost uh, because I'm, you know, all this stuff's coming up, but at the same time I'm starting to feel lighter. And I'm starting to feel better. And I, you know, I wasn't really radically losing weight in the beginning, but I was feeling lighter. And so I believe that it wasn't, you know, the food was definitely um, uh, an important component, but it was one component. It was the, the encouragement that I, was, that I was receiving. It was also people pointing out to me my patterns, the way I was behaving, my language, uh, not necessarily the swearing so much, which... You know, I definitely pepper my language from time to time, but it was more the self-deprecating language that I that I was that was so prevalent in my in my speech, and it was and every time it was pointed out, there were times when I was getting very irritated because the ego doesn't like the ego enjoys the status, the comfort of the status quo, right? And 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 my ego was constantly being challenged, and um, and so it was a it was a very holistic experience and and i was very i was lucky i had you know i had what i had but it was also it it was the 42 days of the filming but i wasn't done with my negativity after the 42 days and now everything stopped i reverted back to where i to actually to worse to, to where i was and then i had another launch and um another another rebirth it was the 42 days was an introduction into the possibility of another way of being. It was an introduction into another conversation that I wasn't fully ready to engage in. I had some more research to do on the dark side. And, and, and also, Frank, I remember from the film uh, and the book, you had a lot of forgiveness that you needed to work on 
in your relationships with your daughter and your ex-wife, which I would like to go into in the next segment after commercial break. And I would like to bring Kim in on that discussion about the ego and how it gets in the way of the forgiveness process because Kim is our resident expert on the ego. You're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I'm so delighted to have Frank Ferrante back to talk to us about his journey back to self-love through Gratitude Cafe. You're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I'm your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant, with my co-host Kim Michaels at TranscendenceToolbox.com. You can find all of his books. We'll be back with more. It's called the dose response curve. The greater the trauma, its frequency and duration, the more likely a person will get post traumatic stress syndrome. David Morris. So if you have five people in a Humvee, two get it, three don't, it's likely that the two that did get it were the ones that were closer to the explosion and or felt the most threatened. Morris served three tours in Iraq. He says the atrocities one sees close up can bring on PTSD. Pilots are less likely to suffer, ground troops and trained marksmen more vulnerable. And that's one of the factors at play with snipers and with Chris Kyle. The snipers are sort of unusual in the sense that they are some of the few troops that will actually see with no ambiguity, I just killed another human being. David Morris chronicles his own struggle with PTSD, the causes and history, and details treatments that offer healing and hope. The book is The Evil Hours, a biography of post-traumatic stress. That's Primetime Focus, brought to you by AARP. I'm Aileen Ellis. Did you know that with a bachelor's degree, on average, you can make almost twice as much over a lifetime than a person with just a high school diploma? Yes! According to the U.S. Census Bureau, you can make almost twice as much. Going back to college is now easier than ever. There are select online colleges that provide laptops to their students. In fact, there are thousands of college programs on your laptop. You can go to college anywhere and everywhere right from a laptop. Call My College Laptop and you can find hundreds of programs from accredited colleges and universities nationwide. Start a new career in law enforcement, business, information technology, healthcare, and hundreds of others. Call My College Laptop to find an online college that will provide you with a laptop. In no time at all, you can double your earning potential. Double your earning potential. Call now. 1-800-582-7531. That's 800-582-7531. 800-582-7531. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet. Fresh asparagus. Hollandaise on the side. A filet. Medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare. Close your eyes and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Roots Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Roots Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at RuthsChris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. You hear that, kid? That's the hum of a well-run facility. You know what I hate hearing? Silence. Silence on a production line means downtime. Downtime means wasted time. Wasted time means wasted money. Silence isn't golden, kid. It's deadly. That's why I love Granger. With a wide variety of the latest products, Granger gets us what we need when we need it to help keep this place up and running and humming away. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Chuck Lauder here, host of the original Talk Back. Noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time, 3 to 5, out there on the East Coast. You know, we cover everything you need to know to keep up with what they don't want you to know. Talk back, CRN, Digital Talk, noon to 2, Pacific Daylight Savings Time. Okay, 
right, we're back. Continuing our discussion with my um, guest, Frank Ferrante, star of the documentary May I Be Frank. Um, Frank, I wanted to focus on um, the journey back to forgiveness and self-love in this segment and uh, your battle with the ego. Um, Kim, I'd like to open up with... Um, your comment um, on how the the ego gets in the way of our journey back to love and forgiveness. Well, the ego wants us, like Frank said, to stay with its status quo. And what often happens is that something happens in our lives that challenges that status quo. And then in order to maintain its control, the ego has to come up with some more complicated or more convoluted scheme to make us stay there. And it sounds to me like Frank was a good example of that with what he was talking about with the negative view of himself and the way he was talking about himself all the time. I think that's very typical of how the ego backs us into this downward spiral where everything becomes more and more negative, more and more uh, convoluted and and we spend so much time and energy just defending this that eventually we we, do, we just can't do it anymore, you know. And that sounds like what Frank experienced, that he was ready for something because his life was just such a mess that he couldn't <laughs> deal with it. Exactly. And I remember the meltdown scene that you had in the film, uh, Frank. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Well, the uh, meltdown scene is, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I think that it was, it's typical of, of people that, you know, may, you know, there are different ways of expressing it, but it's, I think it's typical of people that, that have unresolved wounds. Um, yes. And who doesn't? Yeah, right. And who doesn't, right? And, and that's the, uh, that's one of the big discoveries of my life was I just, you know, the, the, uh, the joy and the pain of discovering that I'm just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I want it to be spe- so special. I want it to have, like, you know, like, really, I want it to have a rare blood type. I mean, I was really <laughs> invested in being special. Well, well, wait, Kim, uh, isn't that one of the hallmarks of the ego? Oh, definitely, yes. You know what else is funny about the ego? Like, the, the moment you, the moment people, the moment it starts, the moment we talk about it, it's in the room. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Buying yeah. for attention. <laughs> it's there, you know, it's like we're talking about it. It's in the room. You know, and I, 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 I don't subscribe to the notion that that uh um you know that I hear often outside is that uh you know about the destroying the ego or or you know, eliminating it. I think, you know, the best that I'm gonna be able to do is mitigate yeah. and um you know, because it's not leaving. Unless I become Jesus or Shiva or somebody <laughs> like that, you know, I'm going to have to deal with the, an ego. And That's so true. It's it's in the spiritual practice. It's in the daily life practices that enable me to be less of a, less of a jerk out there in the world. Well, well, could, could I, Kim? Could I get you to comment on what he just said about not being able to get rid of the ego? I think that's a really, really good insight. I don't think you can destroy the ego because, like Frank said, the more you talk about it, the more attention you give it, the more you actually reinforce it. It just hides from you. So, But I think what you can do is become aware that I'm not the ego. I'm more than that. And then you start distancing yourself from it. And I think that is truly a lifetime process. Yes. And daily, I would say, Professor, that it's daily. I mean, yeah, it's it's it does, the. the whole, I would <laughs> love to know. I like it's sometimes the idea, fantasy of like arriving at that, you know, at that vibration where you no longer have to do any more work. Yeah, it's not, like, not going to happen. <laughs> no, that's the ego that wants that. That's the ego too, right? <laughs> it, it wants you to believe that now you finally nailed it, so you can stop looking for your ego, and uh. then it can hide from you the rest of your life. <laughs> Yeah, then the ego can relax. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I got him now. So yeah. So and and it's a game. You know, it's 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 really, it's and it's very. I, and I think that that there's certainly a tendency for us to complicate things. I yes. Mean, basically, the way I look at it, I'm gonna. You know, my my aim is to be the most decent human being. I can be the most decent man I can be today. And what does that mean? It means that that I try to that I do my best. To to be conscious of my speech and my actions, you know, is you know one of those one of the Buddhist things that before you say something, is it true? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is it kind? Is it necessary? Yes. And I, I assure you that if we all followed that, it would be quiet out in the streets. <laughs> 
I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Because by the way, the- not that I can do that. Being a <laughs> being a sort of barbaric Italian from Brooklyn, it doesn't come easy to me. <laughs> but but we could start with just is it true? Um, yeah, and, right. And then maybe go into being kind, and you know, is it necessary? It's it's a work in progress, day at a time. Yep. <laughs> Thank God for the twelve step programs. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my family were alcoholics, so I'm very familiar with the 12-step uh, ideology, and I think it's a very beautiful concept that I think had you not been in it, as you said, you never would have walked into Gratitude Cafe. No. Never and, never would have walked into it. Kim, could as you a- just say something about the power of gratitude in the healing process? Yeah, I think it is. First of all, it helps you get out of that negativity. You know, um, you you feel like you're always behind when you are in a negative spiral, and the ego wants to reinforce that. And if you can somehow find that gratitude for anything, you you kind of break that spell. I I, I found that that is true for me, uh, Frank. What about you? Oh, I love uh, being grateful. I find that um, when I'm grateful. I am at the height of my mental health. I am, you know, I feel, I feel, the thing about gratitude is, for me, is that it's not just, you know, it's very, it's not just about, it's a global experience, because what happens when I'm grateful, I can, my life is so manageable. Yes. You know, like this morning, for example, the numbers got confused, and <laughs> right. the, my landline stopped working, I had to go to a friend's house, and all this oh, stuff. Oh, my. And, and, um... No, and because I just came from a, of a retreat, and like I just really was just looking at another way, another way of being, it was manageable. I, it was it was going to work out one way or another. The sky wasn't going to fall, <laughs> and with that, and I was grateful, grateful I was going to be interviewed. Great, and I was so grateful for my attitude. Oh, and you know, so same, grateful. Same here, Frank. Because when I was calling that number, and it was just ringing. And when I got here and they said, no, he hasn't checked in, I went, oh, well, okay, um, Kim is always there and we can wing it. <laughs> and, you know, the thing is, in some circles, that attitude would seem irresponsible. Right. And, and cavalier. And uh, it's not. It's not irresponsible. It's like, it's, a, it's almost, I remember when, I remember when, um, when John Kennedy was, was assassinated there was a priest, I was in Catholic school, and there was a priest that was saying really nasty things about Jacqueline Kennedy mm-hmm. because she wasn't visibly crying. Right. And even as a boy, I thought that that was so harsh. Right. Because, you know, because what? Because, so you have to you know, sort of like demonstrate this thing, have to demonstrate anxiety, demonstrate when she was, you know, she was being, you know, dignified and dealing with, with her grief in private and how about she was in shock a sacred moment <laughs> yeah and so but so so instead of us going nuts and saying you know saying nasty things about each other i know that you were doing the best you could on your end and i and i and i took for granted that you thought the same of me but absolutely. that was because i was grateful absolutely and and i just find that uh i had to learn the difference between a minor inconvenience and a catastrophe and learning the difference between those two i find that most things are just minor inconveniences and when i let go and let god in in a situation boom i i think to check my email and your publicist has sent me the new number so i'm i'm just loving how that works is ain't life grand honey <laughs> It is. And all you got to do is be grateful. And you know what I love about Gratitude Cafe? And Kim Michaels is finally coming to uh, the United States after years to do a conference with us. So, Kim, I'm going to take you to Gratitude Cafe. And, Frank, I I think they've got some fabulous food there. What I love about it is how they imbue each dish with something to be grateful for. And I can actually feel the name of each dish um, when I eat it. Um, did you ever have that experience with any of those dishes? I'm not as deep as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot oh, more shallow. Uh, okay, I I'll accept that. I, I really don't give it all that much. So <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, it, it well, was. I aspire to your depth. <laughs> I, yeah, I aspire to it. Well, I love I love your humor and I love your honesty and candor. Um, you know, I also um, can relate to um, something you said in your book about how being on tour, you feel like you have to live up to this image that people have of you that has been formed from the video and and how you struggle with that every day. And I find that to be the case with almost everyone who is in the public eye. Kim, have you ever, you know, felt yourself struggling with that at all? Well, I, I haven't been famous enough to have a, have a major problem, but, but you I do can, have a problem. Yes, anytime you have a group of people who knows you, they have a mental image of you. It can be your family. Yes. It can be your spouse. It can be your children. Uh-huh. It can be any group. They want you to live up to that. They want you to stay within the boundaries they've defined for you. Yes. Well, actually, what, what I remember, um, um, what I remember was that the, the problem that I, the, the difficulty, the challenge that I had on tour was, wasn't exactly that. It was that, that there were aspects of my life that were in disarray. Yes. And then I would, and then I would, when I would go up on stage and talk about, talk about the mind, body, spirit connection to health and wellness and et cetera, I would feel like an imposter yes. because I had these these parts of my life that were not in harmony. Exactly. And, and, and so one, you know, one day a friend said to me, Frankie, don't let your mess get confused with your message. <laughs> I love that. And, and so that was my problem, I thought, because I thought you were supposed to be, like, I had this notion that Deepak Chopra and all these other people were perfectly aligned in every way and every, you know, in every day and every way, nothing could be further from the truth. I agree. And so, you know, and so I, I you know, I, I, and so once I started getting comfortable with the, with that, um, because we're all a work in, pro- in progress. You uh, know? That, and the, that's the, true. And the funny thing is that when, you know, when I tell people I'm not an expert, they tend to ask me more questions. <laughs> Well, Kim is the same way. He's very humble, although he is an expert after having written 40 books. But I, I, I love that humility. And I like that comment you just made about not confusing your message with your mess. And it's funny. I named uh, the opening chapter in my new book, The Blessing in My Mess, because Kim's work has helped me understand that as long as you're on planet Earth, you know, you're going to be dealing with some type of challenge, some type of growth opportunity and that's kind of how I see the messes in my life as opportunities to grow and I don't feel like I need to be perfect because I just have to work on this one particular area and if I succeed in that I know that there's another area over there that I need to clean up and there will always be another one so that that kind of took the pressure off of me and I I thank you Kim for those insights And, and thank you Frank for sharing that that insight. Yeah, well, and, I can, and you can count I can on say, it. You want to get a visit from the universe? <laughs> Tell it that you got it together and you, everything, you know, now everything's behind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll get a knock on the door in a second. Right? <laughs> Kim, I know you have something to say on that. Well, I can certainly relate to that. Any time you're in a position as a teacher, people want you to be the perfect human being and woe unto you if you're not. <laughs> I mean, people love building up an idol and then tearing it down afterwards. That's one of the primary pastimes of the ego, I think. Especially in America. Media. Especially in America. That, that is the American pastime. Well, I save them the trouble. I, I go on stage and say, look, I don't know anything about anything except what I, my experience. Uh, I love and it. And that's it. If you want to tear me down, you've got to get in line. <laughs> And and I do find, Frank, that just being honest and, and open and candid, um, people really appreciate that, and they really do um, open up to hear more about your story because that's all it is, is our story, don't you think? Yeah, and that's subject to scrutiny, too, because the story <laughs> is going through a bunch of filters. Like, you think about people that talk about their childhood in their 60s, by the time you're 60, you, you can't really rely on the accuracy of that story anymore. I agree. I'm, I'm finding that to be the case as I'm uh, editing this book. I had to text my sister 
um, and and go, wait a minute, am I remembering this right? Um, did, did this person that you know? I just got to check myself. Yeah, and now you know what I told him. One time I was in my therapist's office. I was about like fifty eight years old, and I said something, and then he gave me that look that <laughs> therapists give you. And I looked at him in exasper. Looked him, looked back at him in exasperation, and said, "Wait a minute, are you gonna t- wait? Do I?" Do I have to talk about my mother again or something? <laughs> and I said, I said to her, I said, Brian, I said, you know what my nightmare is? I'm going to be sitting in this chair at 60 talking to you about my parents. You know, like I just, when do I catch up to the present? You know, and really, you know, when I decide to. Uh, I love it. That's so true. And well, I don't talk about my parents much anymore, uh, except well, in something sweet or a funny story. I love that because I, you know, traditional therapy has been so much about blaming our parents for everything instead of taking personal responsibility. So um, as we, well, we're getting ready to go into commercial break again. That went fast. So I'm talking with my guest, Frank Ferrante, about his new book, May I Be Frank, and my co-host, Kim Michaels. Um, with TranscendenceToolbox.com. We'll be back after commercial break wrapping this up. You're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I am your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant, and my co-host is Kim Michaels. We'll be back with more after commercial break. Experience a luxury boutique hotel escape in the heart of Laguna Beach, California. With the finest art gallery, shopping, dining, and nightlife just steps from your door. The heart of Laguna Beach, the edge of the sea. It's the Inn at Laguna Beach. Enjoy our comfortable rooms, blending the style of a timeless beach bungalow with the modern comforts of today. 70 newly appointed guest rooms and suites await you at the Inn at Laguna Beach. Then, relax at the rooftop bar, where you'll indulge in breathtaking views of the ocean. For dining, you'll find libations and local cuisine on the California coastline, including dining at the legendary Las Brisas, a Southern California landmark. The Inn at Laguna Beach. Footsteps from room to village to sea, located in the heart of Laguna Beach. The Inn is within walking distance of all that Laguna Beach has to offer. No car required. The Inn at Laguna Beach. 211 North Coast Highway in Laguna Beach, California. Call 800-544-4479 or visit innatlagunabeach.com. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collections and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-211-8753. That's 800-211-8753. 800-211-8753. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free, and your donation is tax-deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Hi, this is Fred Dreyer. Join me and Michael Horn on the PM Show Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern here on CRN Digital Talk. 
We talk about things in the sports world nobody else does. So listen in to me and Mike at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on CRN Digital Talk. And go to crntalk.com for more information on other show times. And don't forget to take us with you by downloading the CRN app on the App Store. Okay, Frank, we're back wrapping this up. Um, talking about your new book, May I Be Frank. So what I'd like to know is, have you been able to maintain the weight loss and all of the other wonderful things that you, you know, gain from your experience with Gratitude Cafe? And if so, how have you been able to do that? Well, I have maintained it because if I get fat, I lose my job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pressure, huh? So there's a lot of mo- No, not pressure, motivation. Oh, good. Motivation. <laughs> and, uh, it, and it's really interesting. I, I'm joking about it, but in a way it's true. I mean, it, it, I've never really... I, I, I've never really been a fully new age guy, you know. So I, there's like a lot of the language that that I was. I, I did. I went into a lot of this with a tremendous amount of skepticism, but I really do believe that in, in some way um, things are light. Many things are light driven. The film was light driven, and it's almost like the universe is helping me stay alive by <sighs> virtue of. Of the tasks that are, that that it assigned to me, and yes. and um, um, because they're really contrary to so many years of the way I, I lived, and so and so I I have a desire to to live in, you know live a live a, a better life, and and part of that is part of my redemption because I, I made a lot of mistakes, and people some people say there are there are, almost, there are no mistakes. Well, you know what? I think I made mistakes. And I also, and the biggest mistakes that I made involved hurting other people. And, yes. and I, and I am afforded the amazing opportunity of being able to redeem those things by living a life that is, is a, a redemptive life. And, and the way that, the way that works is in sharing my information, my experience with other people that want to make a change or that are, are, are suffering for whatever reasons they are suffering, and my interaction with with people um, has enabled me to have a, a lighter heart, a more open heart, and to help me forgive myself for the, the things that I've done in my life that um, were less than kind. Oh. And uh, I am so grateful to be able to do that. I mean, how much, how lucky is that? <laughs> you know, how lucky is that to be able to clean up my life by virtue of helping other people do the same thing and and I and I and I enjoy it you know I, I always thought that work meant suffering you know, work <laughs> meant somehow you know really a suffering and now work is work is actually going as deep as I possibly can and continue to excavate um, to excavate and and um, discard it and what what doesn't serve me or anyone else because if it's not serving me it's not serving anybody else and absolutely and and at this point in your life you get to play because I, I noticed um, you know there's a certain playfulness about you and lightheartedness that certainly was not there in the film and that's a huge bonus for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and Kim I want to close with you uh, and a quick comment on joyfulness and playfulness well, I actually would like to comment on what Frank said about when do you get over your parents and your past in general. <laughs> and the answer is when you stop defining yourself in relation to them. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you both for joining me today and sharing these insights. And Frank, you keep up the good work. And um, I'd love to see you again. Are you in the L.A. area now? Yes, Santa Monica. All right. Well, we're going to have beautiful Santa Monica. We're going to have to meet at Gratitude Cafe in Venice pretty soon. Yes, and if you'd like, I can give you the website where you can get in touch with me or get my book and and oh, well, well, please that I get do. that website quickly. Okay, it's, uh, it's my website is mayispeakfrankly dot com and uh, also lifesourceretreat dot com. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us, Frank Ferrante. Thank you.
the show sound like this? What if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear, high definition digital sound? Well, with CRN Digital Talk Radio, six channels of high definition radio, you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before in CRN HD. The difference is amazing. Catch your favorite political hosts like Dennis Prager, Tom Hartman, Barry Farber, and so many more. Entertainment and lifestyle programming like the Robert Conrad Show, the What's Cooking Show, and the What's Cooking on Wine Show, all in true CRN HD audio. Sports, business, travel, food, wine, politics, there is something for everyone, and it's all available in CRN High Definition Sound. Log on to www.crntalk for listings and information on all your favorite shows. That's www.crntalk.com. The Radio Channel. With SRN News, I'm Linda Kenyon in Washington. Our alliance is stronger than ever. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu speaking to the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee today, saying the U.S. and Israel remain very close allies. Netanyahu's speech kicked off a highly charged visit to the U.S. that has sparked criticism in both the U.S. and Israel. The Israeli leader also focused on Iran's nuclear ambitions today and said Israel will defend itself. American leaders worry about the security of their country. Israeli leaders worry about the survival of their country. Netanyahu will address Congress tomorrow. He was invited to speak by congressional Republicans without consultation with the White House. Also at SRNews.com, Secretary of State John Kerry is in Geneva trying to reach a deal to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Any deal must close every potential pathway that Iran has towards fissile material, whether it's uranium, plutonium, or a covert path. Kerry meets with the Iranian foreign minister later today in this latest round of nuclear negotiations. Iraqi security forces have launched a large-scale military operation to recapture Saddam Hussein's hometown from ISIS militants. State-run television says the forces are attacking Tikrit from different directions, but have not yet entered the city. In Washington, the Pentagon says the U.S. is not providing airstrikes in support of the operation because Iraq has not requested it. A big announcement today from Senator Barbara Mikulski, the longest-serving woman in Congress. So I'm here today in Fells Point to announce that I will not be seeking a sixth term in the United States Senate. Senator Mikulski, a Maryland Democrat, has served more than 30 years on Capitol Hill. She says she will finish out her current term, but will not run again in two years. Barbara Mikulski is 78. This is SRN News. 20 years of debt management services, nearly $100 million saved in finance charges. It's Trinity's 20th anniversary, and these are just a few of the milestones we're celebrating as we begin our third decade of helping people become debt-free for keeps. My name is Mike. Trinity brought us relief by greatly reducing our interest and consolidating our bills into one easy-to-manage monthly payment. Call 1-800-990-6976. 1-800-990-6976. I don't like sit-down dinners. I don't go to sit-down strikes. I like standing room only. And I don't ride bikes. This pretty bad song is by a guy with pretty bad hemorrhoids. He needs Preparation H relief with a power of two. First, use fast-acting Preparation H medicated wipes, then longer-lasting Preparation H maximum strength cream. Let's sit together on the porch swing. Preparation H. Don't stand for hemorrhoids. Use is directed. And try specially formulated medicated wipes for women. Crews have been working to clean up a mudslide that shut down a stretch of the Pacific Coast Highway northwest of Los Angeles over the weekend. The Weather Service says the area received between a quarter inch to a half inch of rain overnight, causing that mudslide. Sherman Oaks resident Jordan Orange tells KNBC-TV the rain is falling too fast and too often. I'd appreciate a little less rain more often than just all the rain at once. It was like a shower just unloaded on us.